the pandemic was disruption. And now this is going to be the next wave of disruption. Hello, and welcome to Martech Vibe Dialogues, where we speak with thought leaders, experts, and futurists. And today we have someone we all admire, Brian Solis. He's an award-winning author, highly sought after keynote speaker. He studies the effects of emerging technology on business, marketing, and culture. Welcome, Brian. So my, my first question to you would be, uh, obviously the pandemic challenged our adaptability as marketers. So how well do you think marketers have done over the last one and a half years? How well have they adapted to the market condition and to the way consumers are changing? It's hard to group marketers as a whole because what I've seen over the last over the last decade are there marketers who are becoming incredibly specialized in forms of of more personalized or direct engagement. So, for example, everything from uh, personalization marketing to growth marketing uh, that these specialized marketers really learned how to help drive outcomes that they were being measured against. So for example, some of the best marketing that I had seen in a while was in the direct-to-consumer category because these brands had uh, everything to gain and everything to lose. Uh, and they had a different mindset. Uh, there's a, a philosophy that I talk about called constraint forces creativity. Uh, when you have to win, you win. Uh, but, for, but in general, I, I, do want, I do want to say that there's an opportunity for all marketers to grow. And I think because of the pandemic, there's an opportunity for all marketers to reimagine what marketing is. So with the pandemic, we saw that AI-powered platforms and machine learning, uh, automation. These are things that had accelerated digital transformation adoption 10 years, five years to now. And that gives marketers the ability to really uh, plug into data sets <laughs> that, that they probably don't use today but could to really get a robust and rich 360 uh, view of the customer. Because what I believe is that once we can start mining existing data sets, putting them into platforms uh, that can make sense out of them, uh, and then powering, powering a, a more cross-functional form of engagement that marketing can actually lead the evolution of customer experience. Somebody's got to own it. Uh, somebody's got to say that this is the standard for our customer experiences. And then somebody has to work cross-functionally to make all of that data actionable uh, to an experiential standard. So it's a maybe it's a lofty, crazy idea, but I do know that in our Salesforce, which one was it? The state of uh, marketing report that came out in 2020, that Somewhere, I'd have to get you the exact stat, so I apologize. But in some, somewhere in the 60 percentile, uh, high performance marketing, uh, those leaders said that they were owning customer experience. They were just taking it and owning it. And in our state of, might be the same report, that also high functional marketing leaders reported that they share a CRM system with sales and service. So you can see that the foundation starting to get set because that is at least a, a much more completer view of the customer than we've ever had. And by we, I mean businesses. So with that being said, marketers actually have the opportunity to lead what that customer experience could look like, to lead real, true, honest personalization finally, uh, and also give that customer a sense that even if they're being marketed to, right? Or if they're being served in service, or if they're in the purchase mode, that that company knows who they are, knows their preferences, knows their expectations, knows their history, and can deliver better experiences, better next best actions, uh, and better support. So to me, that's all marketing. No, sounds sounds wonderful and sounds logical. Since you mentioned about CX, you mentioned about personalization. So I want to draw you into brand loyalty. You know, obviously, mm -hmm. again, last year, brand loyalty was stretched to the maximum. Consumers were looking at either value propositions or they stuck to their brands because of 
amazing service. So what, what have brands done, successful brands done to win the hearts and minds of their consumers? I can tell you, you know, I, I tend not to talk about specific brands, but I can tell you that the concept of loyalty is up for complete reimagination right now. In fact, I've, I've had just in the last two weeks, four conversations about reimagining loyalty uh, within brands. And that's, that's, that's four times more than I've had in the last two years. <laughs> because uh, the, the reality is, is that if you look, again, I'm a big research-driven uh, uh, person. I'm also a, a digital anthropologist. So I am, I'm constantly looking at how digital is changing people. So maybe what I'll do is, if it's okay with you, I'm going to back up and then I'll come back to your answer, Ravi. So uh, because I'm a digital anthropologist, some of my research, well, some, all of my research this last year has been hyper-focused on how the pandemic has changed customer behaviors. Uh, and what I ended up learning is that it wasn't just their behaviors that were changing, uh, it was their values. Uh, what, what, they, what they love, what they don't love, what's the meaning of life for them. And I, I'm not kidding. You know, it got very philosophical, very spiritual. People uh, started to reimagine their own definitions of success and happiness, uh, that they decided where they would spend their money would be different. The brands that they would be loyal to would have to align with their values. Uh, and also that uh, they became more conscious. And this is still unfolding. Trustworthiness, for example, was at the top of the list of what customers said that brands had to change, that they were measuring uh, a brand's trustworthiness as a result of the pandemic and how they behaved during the pandemic. And that 31% last year had said they already trusted that a uh, brand less. Uh, so this is really starting to, to lay the foundation for a new, well, basically a new genre for brand itself. What does your brand represent? And does it align with my values? And then also, how do you earn my business and then my loyalty? So a couple other things that I want to set the stage for, because it's disruption, right? It's the pandemic was disruption. And now this is going to be the next wave of disruption, which is 61% um, since the pandemic has stopped doing businesses with uh, stopped doing business with brands whose values didn't align with theirs. That's a huge number. And then lastly, McKinsey found, and this is true all over the world, the data, the numbers are equally high, but different in every country. Uh, so for example, in the United States, 75% uh, of customers tried a new brand or, or site during the pandemic, and almost all of them are going to stay with that brand. So what that says, it's a long preamble, but it basically says what was loyalty it doesn't exist anymore up for grabs. Uh, so retention becomes critical, acquisition now becomes an opportunity. So for those marketers, uh, they have to realize that there's a sense of urgency to reimagine the loyalty program to keep customers. Uh, so miles, points, uh, buy one, get one, whatever, whatever program they have isn't enough, uh, that there's a human component, a human dynamic that has to be there. Now that's going to be different for each company. They're going to have to know who their customers are so that they can value. They can't go read a top 10 list on some marketing magazine uh, and expect to fix their loyalty problem or, or their loyalty opportunity. They do have to go back to the last question that we just discussed and really understand who their customer is and how they've changed in the last year and reassess essentially their entire customer journey. I would put loyalty right at the top of that uh, because it is, it, it's bleeding. Uh, and then I would also say that, you know, to the earlier question that we had, uh, loyalty itself is a function of the experiences that customers have with the brand. So if you constantly in inundate them with emails that are impersonal, uh, if, if you have a customer service experience that is maddening, uh, those things also affect your relationship with the, with the brand. Uh, I wrote an article recently that said customer service no longer has to be the weakest link in the customer journey. Uh, and that to me is also a place to work on for loyalty. And I mean, loyalty in its truest sense is what's going to keep a company or what's going to keep a customer 
uh, doing business with somebody. 91% of customers said, if I had a good customer service experience, I'd buy more from the company. Uh, so it kind of starts there. I think loyalty is a function now of customer experience work, of journey work, uh, and then looking where things are broken and where there's friction in the journey. Uh, but then also getting to know the customer to learn where you can create new value uh, in each touch point, and then ultimately through a loyalty program.